Doop, David Allman here. In this video, we're gonna compare the DigiDesign 11 rack to the Axe Effect Ultra to the Axe FX2. One of the obvious advantages of these types of machines is in the studio. You don't need any more to mic an amp. You don't need to turn the volume of the amp really loud. You can work with headphones without disturbing anyone. And the sound quality is gonna be very, very accurate, very close to the original amps. Up until now, the most convenient way to do this was with the 11 rack. Plug this via the USB port in the back to your computer, and this is gonna act as a sound card. Things changed though. The Axe FX2 also acts as a sound interface. Another really cool feature of the Axe FX2 is that when you're recording a track on your guitar, you have the ability to record up to four different tracks. That's two pairs of stereo tracks. One is gonna record the signal of your Axe FX. The other one is gonna simultaneously record a dry signal of your guitar, allowing you to reamp, change the effects of your tone once the track has been recorded. The 11 rack used to do that only in Pro Tools. The Axe FX2 opens new doors because you can do that with any kind of recording software. The 11 rack comes with about 16 different amp models. The Axe FX Ultra comes with 70 different amp models. And you'll have more than 70 amp models in the Axe FX 2. The 11 rack gets you about 18 types of effects. The Axe FX Ultra has about 35 types of effects. The Axe FX 2 gets the same amount of effects that the Axe Ultra has with some improvements in tone and in control. I'm gonna base this review off of three common amps. Clean Fender amp, a high gain Marshall amp, a super high gain modern Mesa Boogie type of amp. The same exact settings on three machines and I'm gonna play the same riff. No fancy effects, we're just gonna look at the amp models. Let's now check really the dynamics, how the different three machines react when the volume is about halfway on the guitar and then we're gonna crank it up. If the sound cleans up at lower volumes, it's doing a good job at imitating different amp models. <laughs> Between the 11 rack and the Axe FX, there is a big money gap. I understand that, so if you're limited on budget, the 11 rack will serve its purpose. I've been using the 11 rack for about two years. If you're not a purist in sound, it's a great rack to record directly on your computer. If you have the patience to save up to get an Axe FX, I would go that route because the Axe FX has so much more options. I only scratched the surface with it, but out of the box, I can tell that it has huge potential. Money is an issue wait for the Axe 2. I strongly recommend it. Biggest question really is going to be, do you get an Axe Ultra or an Axe 2? Both machines are very realistic machines, I think. They give you tons of options, but the fact that the Axe FX 2 acts like a sound card and the fact that the Axe Ultra is discontinued now, the difference in price between a used Ultra and a brand new Axe FX 2 is not that huge considering the investment. I would definitely wait until you can afford the Axe FX2. Regardless, these three machines, I think, are excellent choices. My plan is to keep the Axe FX2 as my main machine, and I'm probably gonna resell the Axe Ultra. I don't need both. And I might sell the 11 rack. I don't know yet. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and until then, salut.